Hi. Welcome back to the Logbook Podcast. We're here in Austin, Texas, outside of the Texas State Capitol, here to demand health care freedom for veterans, a bill written by Marsha Blackburn. Let's go! What brings you to the Austin Capitol today? I'm here with the State Employees Union fighting for us to get pay raises so we can make a living wage here in Texas. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. I'm from Fort Worth. The average rent is $1,600 per month. They want people to have three, three times that amount before you move in, shown on your paycheck. Well, if that's the average rent, and I'm a supervisor, I'm not the frontline staff, how am I supposed to make, get, get that and have a vehicle and I'm only bringing home $48,000 a year after working for the state for 13 years? What is it you're doing here at the Texas Capitol today? I'm here, I'm a retired educator and I retired in 2005. And uh, the last time there was a cost of living adjustment for retired educators was in 2004. I've been on retirement annuities for almost 20 years with not one penny's worth of uh, adjustment. We're here, there's I think about a thousand of us, and it looks like finally it's going to happen. So what y'all doing here in the Capitol today? Uh, protest. <laughs> protest? And what do y'all protest? No, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, yeah. We went for one earlier for like transportation. Um, yeah. transportation. Oh, so demonstrating yeah. pretty much, okay. Yeah. What's all that about? We're on a, in favor of getting rid of cars. And well, well, what is it? Roads, so they can stop building. So more public transportation is what you're after. So more like a like a European based thing where the buses, the trains, and everything like that. Other options for people to be able to get around instead of just using cars to do the health or you know crashes or whatever it may be. Trying to slow down. And then also. Now we're here for the housing and taxes, uh, a bill that they put into place in 2016 that a lot of people, that are they are not aware of it, but it's uh, heavily condemning us slowly but surely um, in regards to housing, um, lower income housing, um, just taxes on um, buildings or properties that... Right, you truly never own your house. Even because even after you pay off your mortgage, you're still paying those taxes. So it's I, I agree with you totally there. Because you know to have to pay taxes on a house that you're supposed to own. I mean, yeah. I'm not paying taxes on a Snickers bar I had three exactly. days ago. Yeah. So why should I have to pay taxes on a house I already bought? And then they have people coming in um, building places, and that's higher for the minorities to even you know kind of afford, and that leaves us in a bad place as well. So. It's just that situation in itself leaving us stuck out. Do y'all love veterans? Yes. You said, do we love them? Yeah. Do you love veterans? Yeah, my brother a veteran. Yeah. Yes, I love them. Yes. I absolutely do. Of course, who doesn't like veterans, right? Right. Do you do, any, do, you do anything to support the veteran community? Yes, I do. You, you, can you go into detail about that? Yes, I can. I am actually an assistant scoutmaster with Troop 205. We actually do the flag burnings. As when you say... Flag burnings, you're doing flag disposal, right? Flag disposal. Okay, let, let's clear that up right now. Dis, dispo, disposal of used and tattered flags. Okay. <laughs> we support our veteran community by getting them out. We work with a couple of VFWs. We are working with a, the Le American Legion with um, training kids on how to use firearms safely. We also show up at their events to do flag ceremonies. We did, we've done several um, Christmas programs where we present the colors at the beginning of the, flag, the show. I just appreciate them, really, so. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you appreciating us. Yeah, so yeah, that's all I can do. I don't know what I can do. I mean, but it's not like a lot of outsources that kind of give us options on assisting veterans or, you know, things of that nature. So it's like, you know. Yeah, a lot of it's in the dark. It is. There's, I mean, it's not really advertised on, like, how you can, you know, approach us. Y'all got veterans in your family? Yeah. My brother veteran. Your brother? My yeah. papa. Your papa? Yeah. My kids, great uncle. Well, I'm, quite frankly, I'm the county chair for the Webb County Democratic Party, and the veteran services and veteran veteran benefits are very much a part of our platform. I mean, this ought to be a, a given that, that they served, and now it's our turn to help. So I, I, I appreciate the fact that you're bringing attention to it. Have you ever looked into uh, veteran affairs? Yes. 
Like, what are some of the things you found out? Um, well, there are good and bad services. One of the big things about living in Fort Worth is that we have a VA center there. And in Dallas, we have a VA center. But in, people in the outlying areas that are outside of the area have a long ways to go. And sometimes, since they don't live in the DFW, um, getting there is a difficult task. And sometimes the wait time, depending on the service, can be long, such as I know that they ran out of the contrast fluid to do um, x-rays and MRIs. Yeah. <laughs> um, not looking into it, but just uh, working for uh, Veterans Evaluation Services, we kind of got a little bit of information of what they do and what they kind of assist with or, you know, what options they give the veterans on assistance. VES was a good organization because I went through them, like, uh, early on. And the thing is, VA kind of took over VES, and it's yeah, you got fired because of it. I would help, like actually try to help the veterans, especially the older vet veterans, like you know, that's kind of either hard of hearing or don't understand certain things, and they would kind of like time us on these. And sometimes the time didn't matter; it was just like assisting them, making sure they know the information, or making sure they know where they're going, or you know, just helping them out. And they kind of lost that within the sight of whatever they're doing over there now. Or they have y'all going over 100 miles to get to a doctor that may not even be there or may have canceled an appointment that you weren't aware of. So yeah, they make it hard. Do you think the VA is good for veterans? What I hear is that it really needs an awful lot of attention. That's what I hear. We hear some of the stories are pretty, pretty drastic, pretty horrible. And so I would imagine I, I I'm sure the mission is legitimate, but from what I hear, there's a great deal of need to improve. That's what I hear. Yeah, there is a, a big problem with the wait times in the VA. During that VA wait time scandal, did you know that 307,000 veterans died waiting? Yes. You knew about that. Yes. Um, my brother-in-law, he's actually, well, he's not a veteran yet. He's still active military. And I've had several veterans in my family who passed away getting services or waiting for services. For 20 years, many doctors have been unlicensed. 1,600 doctors in community care are unlicensed right now. Have you heard anything about that? No, I had not. You need to bring attention to it. Did you know the VA actually let a serial killer inside the VA? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was they aware of it? I don't think nothing surprises me about them just from working where I work, like knowing how they handle things, I, I feel like it, it's, it's not surprising. During the pandemic, veterans in the VA retirement homes died because homes were not up to standards. In a 126 bed home, 110 veterans died and numbers are said to be worse down here in the South. Can you tell me your thoughts down on that? That is terrible because my father-in-law was in one of the homes with COVID and we basically had to call Health and Human Services of Tarrant County to get them in there to get service for the clients. Not just him, but other ones because the state did not want to come in and do COVID tests on everyone. And he, as a result, he actually passed away from COVID. And it's, it's a travesty, not just for the veterans, because the veterans should be getting better services, but the state and federal government have to do a better job of regulating, regulating the um, the retirement homes so that standards are brought up so we're not leaving our veterans or anyone else in squalor. Did you know veterans have red flag laws on them through the VA, through the VA's patient record flag manual? No, no, I had no idea. Those things don't surface. Right, the secretary of the VA is against the privatization of the VA. They canceled 19.7 million appointments during the pandemic. They treated civilians and canceled in-person appointments. What are y'all's thoughts on that? I mean, I think that it is a thing that they do. Um, even prior to the pandemic, they were doing it. You know, we would have people calling, well, veterans calling in, and they're at a doctor's office maybe 200 miles away, and the doctor's not there. But they wasn't notified, so they don't know. So they didn't did all this traveling. It doesn't matter with age, because it's, it was elderly people like 70 plus, you know, finding their way 200 miles away from home just to get to an appointment for a doctor that's not there. So I just feel like they wrong. This wrong. <laughs> this is wrong. I agree with her. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy.
So they treat the civilians, but they didn't treat. Correct. They're not. They're treating civilians for COVID, but they're not letting us in for cancer or tumors or or surgeries. Even simple stuff like appendectomies, we got pushed back on, and one veteran in the Woodlands actually passed because he was waiting on that. The Houston VA does not have labor and delivery department, but they do perform abortions. What are your thoughts on that? Well, first, I have no issue with the abortions. However, they do need labor and delivery because veterans are at a young age when they retire because they can get in the military at 18, so they are going to be having children. They need a labor and delivery and more women's services because we have women serving in different capacities. Women are now in combat roles, so we need to provide the, the health care that they can get on the outside as well as on the inside. There's a big problem with women's health care because we have a large gap because everybody wants to talk about it, nobody wants to do anything about it. We have women serving in all these roles and we need to be able to provide service for them. They're not, they're not just some side person. They're on the front lines. They need quality service. And if we can't give them quality service, I mean, what are we doing? We had a great time out here in Austin. We got several signatures on Marsha Blackburn's bill to demand federal health care freedom. Join us at The Logbook on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, and so much more. And you too can help push more legislation like this. Thank you.